This simple series circuit contains a conductor, three resistors of varying values, and a 12 volt DC power supply. Current, made up of electrons and measured in amperes, travel from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the power source. Notice there is only one path for current. This is the standard for series circuits. You can also see that it is easy to distinguish between the positive side of the power source from the negative side of the power source. I like to remember this by using the saying, be more positive and less negative. When making calculations for series circuits, we start with total resistance. This is done by adding the resistive values of R1, R2, and R3 together. In this case, we take the resistive value of R1, which is 2K ohms, the resistive value of R2, which is 3K ohms, and the resistive value of R3, which is 1K ohms, to get total resistance of 6K ohms. Once you have total resistance, you can use Ohm's law of E over I times R to get total current. So by taking my total applied voltage of 12 volts, dividing it by 6K ohms, I get a total current of 2 milliamps. Finally, we calculate the individual components voltage drops. We start with R we start with R1 and use Ohm's law again. To get the voltage, we take the resistance of the individual component multiplied by total current. Since there is only one path for current, all of them will have the same current. So if I take my 2K Ohm's resistance for R1 and multiply it by total current of 2 milliamps, I get 4 volts. So the voltage drop of R1 is 4 volts. I do the same for the other two components. R2 is equal to R2 multiplied by total current. 3K ohms times 2 milliamps gives me 6 volts. And for R3, I take an ohmic value of 1K ohms for the resistance of R3 and 2 milliamps total current to get 2 volts. And you will notice that 2 volts and 6 volts and 4 volts add up to 12 volts. This circuit also has four test points. Test point 1, test point 2, test point 3, and test point 4. We use test points in a circuit to make voltage measurements. Many manufacturers include test points in their equipment with notations of proper operating voltages to make troubleshooting easier. The important thing to remember when measuring voltage at, across your test points is that your meter measures difference of potential. So what it's taking is whatever it sees on its red or its positive lead and it's subtracting whatever it sees on its black or reference or negative lead. So if I were to put my black lead at test point 4 and my red lead at test point 1, I would read the difference of my red lead at 12 volts and my black lead at 0 volts, which would give me a difference of 12 minus 0. My meter would show me the applied voltage of 12 volts, which of course makes sense because I'm reading right across my voltage source. Now, if I was reading from, say, test point 4 to test point 3, and I had my black lead referenced at test point 4, and my red lead referenced it, or out at test point 3, then I would see the difference of my black lead, which was 0, and my red lead, which would be 2 volts. So 2 volts minus 0 would give me 2 volts on my on my um, display if I was using a digital multimeter. If I were to have my black lead at test point 4 and my red lead at test point 2, I would read 
8 volts on my digital display because my red lead would have 8 volts and my black lead would be 0 volts. If I were to move my reference point to test point 3 and keep my red at test point 2, now I would see 6 volts because my red lead is 8 volts and my black lead is 2 volts. So 8 minus 2 is 6 volts. All you're reading is the difference of potential between your red and your black lead. So red minus black, that's what your meter shows you, the digital display of your meter. All right, and next we will cover uh, faults. So that's it for now. We're going to cover faults next time.